Hi guys, let's start. Um, last time I talked about you know um, when we have cluster deformation, right? Um, it's related to dislocations. So we have cluster deformation. Related to these locations, kind of you know uh, when you have structure or you have materials, you know you want to perform mechanical tests, right? Tensile tests or compression tests. Um, when we talk about metals, you may see cluster deformation, right? You can see okay, um, there's a, a residual lens, right? Change of lens over there. Uh, so that one is a phenomenon. Right? After you perform tensile test, you can see it. It's visible. It's there, right? But you know, when we talk about material science, we want to see why. What's the fundamental mechanism? What's the physics behind that phenomenon, right? So actually, the mechanism is the dislocations. Um, so, uh, and also, when we understand the dislocations, you know, we we are able to using different techn techniques. To generate the dislocation or to decrease the dislocations or the number of dislocations, we can control, we can change mechanical performance of our structure, of our materials, right? So I think that uh, in this uh, dislocations, when we were in um, chapter 4, imperfection in uh, metals, in solids, and we, we learned this uh, dislocation, right? Uh, we know, okay, uh, dislocation is a uh, one dimensional defect, right? Uh, for dislocations, we may talk about the extra dislocation. That means that we put an extra plane of atoms there. So then we have this extra dislocation. Right? And also we have this, uh, I don't know, probably it's a nickel or platinum. Uh, if you use ruler to, uh, to see whether there's an extra plane of atoms, uh, you are able, you, you, may, you may see it, it's, it's here, right? So uh, that means it's extra dislocation. Uh, and also uh, in chapter four, we talk about the dislocation line and the slip plane, uh, dislocation direction. You know, we call that the progress vector. Uh, I believe you guys are not uh, are familiar with it. Uh, but you know, for this uh, slip plane, today we will talk about more. We will talk about slip systems. Okay. Uh, so slip system consists of a slip plane and the slip uh, direction. So we will talk about uh, in this uh, uh, chapter. Seven uh, dislocations and uh, strengthening uh, mechanisms. And strengthening, okay, strengthening mechanisms. Okay. But apparently, we will talk about dislocation a little bit more. Uh, I think you guys are familiar with this one. Uh, when we talk about edge dislocation, uh, the the process of deformation involves this edge dislocation, right? If we have one partial inverted uh, atoms here, so when you give a load, this one try to die on the surface, right? Uh, hopefully, you guys can remember that. So. This one will involve, okay, this uh, line of atoms will be broken, the bond will be broken, then this one will connect to, to this part, like, uh, then it will move to here, then this one will be broken, it, this uh, 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 blue atom will come to here, come to here, finally it will come to the surface. That means the you know, dislocation will be gone, that means that dislocation will go down on the surface, but you know, you can see, the original the structure is like with this lens, but finally uh, it's, a, it's a longer, right? If you definitely in a material in your structure, we do not have only one dislocation, we have a lot of dislocations. So if those dislocations are done, or we call that uh, analytics uh, on the surface, so then your material will be uh, stronger, uh, longer, right? Uh, and also, uh, we know, okay, kind of the, the dislocation will slip on this plane, right, on this plane. So we call this a slip plane. 
Uh, and also, if you look at this schematic, okay, this will be a slip to this direction. So, you know, this uh, surface will be the uh, through plane, this uh, direction, right? Slip direction. Uh, now, the question is okay, we know there are some dislocations, we know atoms arrangement. Then, uh, when we talk about the slip direction, the slip plane, When we talk about slip, uh, uh, slip direction and uh, slip plane, how? Because you know we have MCC crystal structure, we have PCC crystal structure, we have hexagonal crystal structure. So how do we know which plane, which direction the dislocation prefer to slip on it, right? Uh, so I want to ask you guys a question like when you drive, you want to drive on the uh, bumpy road or you want to drive really very smooth road. Uh, apparently when you drive on bumpy road, it's, uh, it's not comfortable, right? But if, if you drive on the smooth surface, it's a pretty uh, quiet, right? So that means you know, uh, if you drive on the bumpy road, you need to probably, you will consume more energy, right? Uh, similar to the uh, slip, Right. When you have a dislocation, um, if we talk about these atoms, if we have the atoms like this, uh, if we talk about this line of atoms, you can see if this atom slip to the left or to the right, you can see if we just analyze one atom, this atom sit over these two, right? You can see it's the trap the depth, the trap depth is just a really small, right? So that means that this atom will be easy to slip on this plane of atoms. But look at this uh, green line, right? If we talk about this atom, this atom, this atom, this atom, this atom, if we, they want to slip on along this direction, so you can see this atom is trapped almost a, uh, almost a half between these two atoms, right? Uh, I take it out, probably it's easy to see. Okay, if we slip along this direction, you can see this atom is trapped deeply between these two atoms. This atom trapped deeply between these two atoms. That means that, you know, if you want to give a force, you want to push these atoms along this direction, it's pretty hard. Right? It's kind of, a, if you drive a vehicle, your vehicle is trapped in sand. Uh, if it's really big, you have to give a large force so you can take, uh, bring the back right, to the surface. It's really hard. So this one, you can see, just a minor part of this atom is trapped between atoms. So that means that you just give small force. You know, you just push these atoms. Give, just give a small force. You can push all those atoms you know, uh, uh, to this direction. Right? So that means that this is easier. So what's the... Uh, 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 so then how, to, how we can get this atom? You can see this item contact this item, contact this one, contact this one, right? They, they contact together. So that means you know the linear density along this direction is higher. Right? See the linear density along this direction is lower. So kind of you know the items prefer slip, prefer slipping along higher linear density. Uh, and also, similar to this occasion, this occasion prefer prefer sleeping along higher linear density and the planet density. That means, you know, when the distance sleep on a plane, if the atoms, the distance is really big, 
So that means the atom will be trapped inside that easily, right? If the surface is really smooth, that means that with higher planet density, that means the disappearing more on the surface is quite easy, okay? So a higher planet density and higher lead density is preferred. Are preferred for the uh, dislocation moment. Okay. Uh, so uh, again, you know, see, uh, like uh, if we have a higher linear density, uh, if the uh, planar density is higher, so the atom will be trapped uh, uh, shallow, uh, shallow, uh, then the atom can move and spread it on the surface. If there's atom trapped inside, it's pretty hard to, uh, to move on, uh, on it. So that means we just care about, uh, when we talk about slip systems, we include a slip direction and slip plane. Uh, we need to look for which plane has a higher, uh, highest directions, highest the, uh, linear density. Uh, for the slip plane, we talk about, so, you know, we look for the higher, density. Okay, so we look for the uh, higher planet density. Okay, so uh, then we will talk about uh, you know uh, for uh, for metals we have we know we have uh, BCC crystal structure, FCC crystal structure, and the hexagonal crystal structure, right? So let's see uh, how many slip system for that kind of crystal structure, right? And what are those? So first one, we talk about the uh, FCC crystal structure, right? Okay, so we need to identify certain systems for FCC crystal structure. Uh, apparently, based on this uh, criteria, based on this uh, requirement, we just uh, look for uh, when we talk about the direction, we just look for the highest linear density. When we talk about the planet, a slip plane, we just look for the highest planet density. So then for FCC, we have this one, right? <coughs> um, let's see the uh, uh, slip plane. We look for the slip plane. So apparently for FCC, we may have um, we have zero, zero, 001, 110, one, and 111, one, one, right? So we will, uh, uh, we will know, we will see which one has the highest uh, 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 planet density right, for these planes. Uh, we know for zero, zero, 001, it will be this one, right? Actually, it will be this one. Uh, so the number of items for Zero, zero, 001 uh, number of item because we are talking about planet density that means uh, it will be the number of items divided by the total area right so the number of items there is for this plane is zero, zero, 001 right zero, zero, 001 you know we have four corner items that means that uh, we have one uh, item sitting in plane so that means the number of items is two. Okay. Hopefully you guys know it. Okay. Um, and also the area, uh, it will be a square. Right? So that means the uh, uh, planet density. Density will be two. Uh, for let's let's, uh, uh, let's calculate zero zero one. Now uh, I don't know whether you guys can identify zero zero one. So zero zero one will be this this uh, this area. This will be zero zero one. So then we have four corner items. Uh, two 
face centered atoms, that means you know the number of atoms will be two as well. So it will be four corner atoms, each one will be one quarter, plus the two center atoms, each one only half on this uh, 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 plane, right? So it will be one, oh sorry, two. Area will be, so this one will be root square 2a, a. so this one will be a, this one will be root square 2a, so the area will be root square 2a squared. So then the plan identity will be equal to so apparently this one has a higher plan than this, this one, right? So let's see uh, one one one. Okay. So for one one one. So one 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 will be the yellow one uh, in this schematic, right? So uh, how many atoms do we have here? Uh, this uh, uh, equilateral triangle, this one will be one six, one six, one six. We will have three corner atoms, right? Well, three corner atoms. We have uh, three face centered atoms. One, two, three. Each one is uh, one half of, the, of that atom on the plane. So that means we have two atoms as well. Area. Okay. So the, in this equilateral triangle, the set length is uh, root square two a. Right. So the area will be. Uh, this one will be equal to this. Okay. So then for zero zero one, uh, we know the planet density will be uh, planet density will be two. Then let's compare which one has the highest planet density. One is here, one is here, one is here. Uh, the numerator is the same, right? It's two. Uh, the denominator is this one less than one, right? This one is one, this one is uh, uh, larger than one. That means, you know, the plane one, one, one has the highest planar density, right? So that means the syllable plane will be one, one, one. Okay. Um, so in this plane, um, what we talk about in the family of this plane, one, 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 we have one, one, one. Right. So no matter where I talk about this one, this one, this one, under this one, the planet density is the same because they, they are in a family, right? So planet density is the same. So I gave a schematic for one, 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 connect to one, one, uh, one, one bar one, uh, one bar one bar one, or you can call if you multiply by negative one, it will be one, one, uh, uh, one bar, right? So the planet density is the same. It will be this number. So that means that the slip plane will be, will be either this yellow one or this one, or this one, or this one, right? So that's a uh, kind of 
if you have a uh, FCC crystal structure, uh, you may have this is a flow through the planes. Okay. So now we finish uh, figuring out the uh, zero plane. Let's see the zero direction. Uh, for this one, if you have this one on one slip plane, uh, the slip direction, uh, we are looking for the uh, highest the linear density, right? For linear density, right? So we still talk about the 0, 0, 1, uh, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay, let's see. Oh, because we are talking about linear density, right? That means so we are talking about direction. So we have to use this. So be careful, okay? This, uh, uh, if we use brackets, that means we are talking about simple direction. Okay, let's see. Base one, we know the high, the the direction with the highest linear density is a slip direction. So let's uh, compare one zero zero one one zero one 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 in FCC crystal structure. Which one has the highest linear density? So remember, we are talking about FCC, right? So one 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 direction will be this. This direction is one one one. So the number of atoms is one, right? So so kind of if we assume the atom is like a diameter, we have half that uh, radius on this one, radius on this one. So total is one. Uh, so half plus half. One. So the linear density is equal to one divided by eight. So this is uh, direction one zero zero one one zero one one zero will be this direction. So the number of atoms. So we have two n items, right? So at each one is half on this, plus this one sit on it, right? So it will be one, two. So the linear density will be two divided by root square two a. So we change it to be root square two divided by eight. Now let's see one by one. Uh, the number of atoms uh, one by one, one will be here, right? Uh, the number of atoms will be one. Uh, remember, uh, you may think about okay, part of Part of item of oh, this one, this one might be on that line. Okay, remember the center should should be sitting on that line. Then it will be counted. So here is we have only this one will be half, this one will be half, and so it will be one. Uh, that body diagonal uh, in your density. will be equal to number 1 divided by root square. So that means uh, will be this. OK, now we can compare which one has the uh, highest linear density. We have 1 here. We have 1 here. We have 1 here. So apparently the denominator is a here, here, right? Uh, the numerator, this one is one. This one larger than one. This one less than one. So that means the highest linear density will be along one, 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 zero.
Okay. So that means that for FCC crystal structure, uh, the Philip system will be for FCC Philip system. So it will be one one one. One one zero, right? Because of along this plane one one one, it has the uh, maximum planar density. Along one one zero, it has the maximum linear density, right? So certain direction. Uh, then, okay. So this is a family of plane. This is a family of uh, direction. So we want to know how many slip system in FCC crystal structure. Okay. Just uh, letting you know, guys, uh, if we have this plane, this plane can flip this direction and this direction, uh, so, but there's no difference. So we just, uh, we just uh, count one. For this one, we can flip this direction, flip this direction, we can count one. But this, flip this direction along this direction, so we count one. So that means, you know, if we talk about uh, uh, this plane, this plane, right? We have three directions. One is along AD, so it's the negative one. One zero. Okay. Uh, we will not write down uh, one negative one zero because you know there's no difference right? along this direction, this direction. But the difference is here, right? Along this direction. Right? So. Well, you just write down one of them. Then we have another one. Uh, D, E, D, F, one, zero, next one. And A, F. A, F is zero, one. Okay. So this one can slip along this direction, this direction, this direction. So that means you know for one 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 plane we have we have three slip system, right? So we have three slip system. Uh, remember for this family we have for this family we have one 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 we have plane one 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 next to one 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 bar one 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 bar. So each of them will have three, so total will be three multiplied by four, so it will be 12. So that means that for FCC crystal structure, it has 12 slip system. Uh, now right, let me tell you how I get this 12 slip system, okay? So for the plane, we just play, okay, kind of this one, we just play bars, right? So kind of uh, this one has no bar, this one will put a bar on this one, we put another bar on this one, we put another bar on this one. Okay, so now we have four, four categories, right? Four different planes. Uh, so this one you play bars. The, for the family of direction, one, one, zero, right? Uh, we have we have one one zero, we have one zero one, we have One one zero, one zero one, one one zero one one, and we have uh, one bar one zero, uh, one bar zero one, and Zero, one, bar. So this one will play bar. This one we cannot play bar again. So this one will play order. So we can divide this six into two groups. One is one one zero, one zero one, zero one one. 
And the next one is a one bar, one zero, one bar, zero one, zero one bar one. Okay, so one way to uh, identify the select, how many select systems, so one, we just uh, play bars you know, for this plane, right? The other way, we just uh, play orders. So we just uh, play orders like this one. So we don't need to play bars, otherwise, you know, uh, you will double count it. Uh, okay, so this one we play bars. So then, for planes, so each one, we can identify three, three of them, all right, three. This one uh, matches this is three, this one matches this three, this one matches this is three. So that's why we have four multiplied by three is equal to five through the system. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, a uh, slip system for uh, fifth center of the cubic structure. Uh, okay. So any materials like it has FCC crystal structure, we have 12 slip systems like uh, copper, aluminum, nickel, uh, silver, gold, you know, they have. FCC crystal structure, so that means that we have 12 uh, number of uh, 12 three systems. Okay, so let's see. Similarly, we can analyze FCC crystal structure. Okay, so we can we identify we are we are able to identify the slip system for uh, for the uh, BCC crystal structure. Uh, so you guys can follow my way to identify the highest the planet density and the uh, uh, mm, linear density. So in this BCC crystal structure, we know this item contact this item, contact this item. Apparently, for BCC crystal uh, structure, the syllabus direction will be uh, one, 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 right? So because of this item contact this one, this one, right? And apparently, this, this direction has the highest linear density, right? One, one. Uh, and also, if you calculate the slip plane, will be uh, one one zero. Okay, it will be one one zero. One one zero will uh, one one zero plane will uh, have the uh, highest the planet density. Uh, then we can come back to here. So, oh. Well, for the number of slip system. For the number of slip systems, uh, so for this direction, so because we are familiar to play bar on this uh, one, 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 right? So the direction we have one 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 bar one 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 bar one 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 bar right? Okay. For the a slip plane, uh, we have this one one zero. So this one we just play order, right? This one play bar already. So the the last part we just play order. So then we have one one zero. Zero one one and one zero one. So that means the slip system, slip system for BCC crystal structure will be four multiplied by three is equal to five. Okay. Um, so actually, for BCC, we may have other uh, the, the slip system like a two one one and three two one. Like a two one one, okay. Uh, we know for this uh, one one one, we can play bar, so we include one one one, one bar one one, one one bar one, one 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 bar. For the uh, plane, we have we just play order, right? So we play order two 
So that means that we have four here, we have three here, so the number of the system will be 12. Uh, for this uh, three to one, so we for this uh, direction we play on uh, order, it will be one one one, one bar one one, one one bar one, one 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 bar three. For this uh, plane, two planes, three to one, uh, we have 3, 2, 1, 3, 1, 2, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 3, uh, we have 1, 2, 3, we have 1, 3, 2. Right. So see, we just uh, play order. This one we just uh, play bars, we will play bars, this one play uh, order, we will play order. We do not play bars here. So that means we have 4 over there, we have 6 here, that means the number of the system for so this is 3 to 1, 1, 1, 1, it's a 24. Okay, so uh, you can see the calculated the number of positive systems. And the last one is a high signal crystal structure. For high signal closed packed crystal structure, uh, uh, I think you guys know and you know if we uh, can give a direction right in a high signal crystal structure, we have to change translate from three index system to four index system. So like in three index system, we can identify capital U, V, W. And then transfer to four index system is a small U, V, T, W. And also we know small U is equal to one third, two times U minus V. Small V is one third, two times V minus U. And T is equal to negative small U plus small V. And small w is equal to kind of w. We know this relationship. We can convert from four index system to four index system, right? Okay, so let's see how to identify the slip system for uh, for this uh 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 crystal uh, crystal structure. Uh, so like uh, you know when we talk about this is zero zero one. Example like uh, the slip plane for zero zero one. The direction is uh, one. This one. One one one. Uh, one one two bar zero. Okay. So for this, uh, if you we want to identify how many slip system for this uh, plane zero zero one, the direction is uh, one one two bar zero. How many slip system in this system, right? So we have to transform back from four index system back to three index system. Okay? So apparently we can use this relationship. Okay? It's a little bit complicated, right? But we are able to do it. Uh, so if you trans transform back, this one will be Zero zero one. This one will be this one will be one one zero. Okay. So okay, if we are talking about how many slip system in this setup, right? So we have to transform from four index system back to three index system. Okay. Uh, then we just uh, play bar and order. So this one we play bars. So this one we have only zero zero one. Because the other one is zero zero 
you know, uh, zero zero one one zero zero. Uh, we just play bar, all right? This will play bar. So we just uh, put a bar there. Does not change. Still same. We just not have an empty. So that means we have only one here um, for this direction. Uh, we have one one zero. We play order, right? One zero one and zero one one. So that means that we have one multiplied by three. So we have three through the systems. Okay. So we have the same system in this one one zero and one one two bar zero. Uh, similarly, so this uh, this one we can uh, convert into back to uh, one zero zero. So we have still have one here. So this one will have three, so this one, the number of citizens will be three. This one will convert back, and it will be equal to 301. So then, we play bar here, we have 301 and 301 bar. So we have two here, so here we have three, right? Uh, then the total number of slip system for this setup is six. Okay, so this is a slip system, right? So we talk about this uh, mechanism, right? Kind of, uh, the dislocation cannot transport randomly, right? It should follow a, a mechanism or physics, you know, right? So this, that one should satisfy the slip uh, plane should with the highest plane uh, density and the direction should with the highest linear density. That's a uh, physics and the mechanism. Okay. Okay. So that means you know, if we have more dislocations, you know, I want to sleep, you want to sleep. So that means you know, we might affect each other, right? So we will block each other. So that means you know, uh, we can control the mobility of dislocations to improve the strength of the materials. So first one we finished talk about uh, you know velocity deformation. Two dislocation. Second part that we talk about, you know, the mobility of dislocations. With the uh, yield strength of the strength. Kind of, you know, as we have a lot of dislocations in that, you know, I want to sleep, the other one wants to sleep. So they will affect each other. That means that they will block each other. So that means you know, if you want to move the dislocation, uh, you want to have dislocation move to the surface, it will get harder and harder, right? So that means you know, if you reduce the mobility of these locations, then the strength will increase. Okay. So that is the strengthening strengthening mechanism. So we can we can increase the difficulty of mobility of these locations. Uh, then we have three mechanisms for reinforcement or strengthening. Okay. Uh, the first one is reduce green size. First uh, uh, mechanism, the first strategy is to reduce green size. So let's see how or uh, why we, when we reduce green size, the material will get stronger. Okay. So if you have a perfect crystal structure uh, with no defect, right? So you can have a line, a column of atoms, a column of atoms, a column of atoms, then we have atom division. All right. So let's see whether when we reduce green size, the movement of the dislocation will get harder or not. Okay? So this one try to get to the surface. 
And finally, it will reach to here. We call this a green bumper. Because, you know, when we reduce green size, right? So at the beginning, if we have only one frame, we have only one green. So the data variable will be happy to move inside. Right? It's very easy to get to the surface. But right now, we reduce green size. So if you have this location inside, right? this is this location definitely want to move to the surface. Want to move to the surface. Then this will come to the green boundary. Okay, because this direction has the highest plant density and the linear density, so this dislocation has to turn the direction. So that means, you know, if we just walk to this direction, I don't need to think about it, right? I will consume less energy. But you know, you let me, okay, go to that direction, go to that direction, go to that direction, go to that direction, kind of I need to memorize, right? Uh, when I think about that, uh, uh, Directions, I need to think hard, right? It will consume more energy. Similarly for movement of or mobility of dislocations, so this one has to turn this direction. Maybe next time I have to turn to this direction. So that means it will consume more energy. Right? So this one will come to here, finally come to here, then come to the surface. That means you know the green boundary will block the movement, the mobility of dislocations. So that's why, when you reduce the green size, actually we increase the number of green boundaries. Then this green boundaries will block the movement of dislocations. That's why the material will get stronger, right? Because uh, the mobility of uh, dislocations is, uh, is uh, weaker, right? Okay, so this is uh, kind of a larger green uh, we can reduce the green size, then uh, the material will get stronger. The second one is the solid solution strengthening. So you may ask uh, why, uh, I think in uh, imperfect, imperfect in solid, we talk about a solution, right? Solid solution, that means you, if you have pure copper, you can, Salute some zinc atom or some uh, copper atom in it, right? Uh, then we call this a solid solution, right? Why is this a solid solution uh, can increase the strength of your materials? Actually, this is the concept of alloy. Okay, so if we do not have this, we do not have this impurity atoms. The solution, the dissolution will move to the surface happily, right? Uh, it's really uh, easy, right? There's no block. But uh, what's the difference if we put some impurity atom in it? Okay, what's the difference? Do you still remember, you know, if the size is a, even they are close, right? The size might be a little bit bigger than this one, the host atom, might be smaller than the host atom, then we will have what? We will have like this distortion, right? Okay, so when we replace host atoms with uh, impurity atoms, we will have uh, lattice distortion, right? Lattice difference. This is a little larger than the small. Uh, so, then, when you put a smaller one, this host atom C, okay, uh, kind of they have more space around here, so I want to take the, the space here, right? I think I talked about this one before, in chapter four. Uh, if we have a larger one, kind of it's a pretty crowd, and then this atom want to uh, uh, step back, right? So then, we have lattice distortion, right? But originally, it's a flat, but here you can see the, uh, the, the bumpy, you know, lattice, right? This one will have the bumpy uh, uh, lattice. So that means when this location meets this bumpy lattice, kind of, it has to move up a little bit, then come down again. So kind of 
it will consume or it requires more energy to drive dislocation to moon surface. Okay, so that's why when we have this uh, solid solution, because there's some light distortion, right? The light distortion will block or will hinder the mobility of these locations. Now you may ask, okay, uh, if we do not, you know, if two atoms with the same radius or same diameters, okay, then there's no lattice distortion. It's kind of the size is one factor, right? And also, do you still remember there are several other factors like uh, the electron negativity, right? Kind of uh, the ability of atom to control the electrons. And also the valence electrons, right? Uh, so there are several factors. So kind of there's no identical uh, atoms. If we talk about, the, if we compare platinum with uh, uh, nickel, with copper, no matter what, you know, because they are different. So the difference might induce this uh, lattice uh, distortion. Okay. When you have lattice distortion, it will hinder the moment, uh, the moment of dissolutions. Uh, so when you have this uh, solid solution, right, solid solution in host atoms, uh, because you have less uh, uh, lattice distortion, then the tidal stress will increase, the yield stress will increase, you know, but the ductility will decrease. So kind of, if the material is getting stronger, then it will, the ductility will get weaker. Okay, so that's why, okay, when you increase the strength, when you increase the uh, yield strength, then the ductility will come back. So it's always, you know, uh, there's a contradiction between strength and the toughness, or the strength and the ductility. If you can make a material with a higher ductility, higher strength, uh, then you will be safer. Okay. So, and also that's the goal of material science, right? Uh, the last one, the mechanism is, uh, we call that uh, code working, or we can call that spring hub. Apparently, probably you guys have no idea. Okay, what's the string hardening? What is the cold working, right? So, uh, in ancient time, right? In ancient time, when you make a, uh, uh, when the, uh, uh, the blacksmith they make a, a sword, so they put it into furnace, uh, in, uh, then it will get a really hot and uh, red color, right? You can take it off and use hammer to uh, uh, hammer it. When you hammer it. Uh, that one kind of we call that uh, uh, you, you hammer it and then you you put it into water, cold water. So uh, kind of you know we in that time uh, with that uh, uh, um, work we call that string hardening. And uh, uh, and also another way is you know cold working is. We, we just have a piece of air. You just uh, you, you hammer it, you change your uh, shape, and you can make an edge. Uh, kind of, uh, you do not increase temperature, but you just uh, uh, hammer it. So that's what we call that uh, cold working, right? We do not increase temperature. Uh, so, and also this, uh, we call that string hardening. So, what's the uh, uh, relationship between strings and this uh, string hardening? Kind of, uh, when you hammer it, you will give plus a deformation, right? Because if, when you hammer it, it will not come back. It's not a plus a deformation, it's a plus a deformation, right? So when you talk about the plus a deformation, that means you know we generate dislocations. Right? So let's assume at the beginning, assume there's no dislocation, but you hammer it again and again and again, you will generate a lot of dislocations. Uh, remember, so when you generate a lot of dislocations, then the dislocation the material will get stronger, right? So that's why code working can increase the strength of the materials. Okay? Because you know at that time the situation will fight each other. So they want to move to the surface, this one to move to the surface, they will block each other. Right? Uh, so how to that means you know if we increase the dislocations
principle increase, right? Uh, back to the heat treatment, right? So uh, you hammer it, you, you, you increase temperature again, you cram it, then you just put it into cold water. So a kind of, you know, we call that rapid cooling, right? Uh, then, you know, if you keep that temperature, this occasion will merge together. But you know, you just put it into cold water, then the, the dissolution will be frozen. So that means you will have, you will have a lot of uh, dissolution in this. Once you have more dissolution inside the material structure, then the, uh, the structure will be uh, stronger. Okay. So cold working kind of, you just increase the number of uh, dissolutions. Okay. So that means uh, they will affect each other, then the material will get stronger. So kind of, we want to, the goal, if you want to strengthen your material, we want to increase the number of dissolutions. Uh, and also we have dislocation density. So this one is uh, the total length of the dislocation divided by the volume of your materials. Kind of, you know, uh, that way it's very hard to measure, but we still we have some technique we can follow, we can use to measure the total length of the dislocation, uh, dislocations. Then divided by the total volume of the material, we can kind of this uh, you just need to uh, know there's a concept of uh, dissolution density, but you know uh, you are not required to calculate the dissolution density in uh, middle exam and also uh, final exam. Um, so for the uh, forming technique, right? Like uh, if you have plate, you want to cut down the size, um, reduce the thickness, so you can perform rolling, right? So you have roller there. Uh, they roll together, uh, then you have a big place, then you have a thinner one, uh, or you can draw it, you put it, this one down the road, this die down the road, you just uh, draw it. So you can, you, can, uh, forming, uh, you can form a structure, but this one uh, kind of, uh, is kind of uh, cold work. Uh, we can, we can uh, calculate the percentage of cold, cold work. Similar to calculation of ductility, right? So we use the original because you know the plate is getting thinner right? it's after this cold working. No matter it's rolling or drawing, so the uh, the uh, cross section area is getting smaller. So we use the original cross section area minus a uh, final cross section area divided by original cross section area uh, multiplied by 100%. So that is the percentage of cold working. So this a percentage of cold working we can are related with uh, uh, new strengths. And back it. So this one is really, really important engineering uh, uh, question. Like uh, if you work in industry, right? Uh, you, your, your advisor, your, your supervisor asks you to give a plan how to, okay, I have this plate, but finally I want to have a plate with a certain, uh, with a certain yield strength and also ductility. So how much cold work we should give? All, all, what kind of plan, what kind of plan for the uh, heat treatment, right? So this is a really good engineering problem. I, uh, in, the, uh, in the homework, I will give you guys one homework problem, a design problem, but I will uh, quickly go through before you work on it today. Uh, so this uh, after you have this uh, material, right? After you give this uh, uh, code working, because you know, no matter it's a forming or drawing, uh, kind of uh, the, the crystal uh, direction kind of uh, uh, elongated along this direction, right? Uh, so one point here is this one, if you perform mechanical, mechanical test along this direction and this direction, 
the mechanical property will be same. But you know, here, because you know, kind of all ring are along this, following this direction, if you perform tensor tensor along this direction, along this direction, you may have different mechanical property. That means uh, a lot of model uh, 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 fracture strains, uh, fracture strains, uh, tensor strains might be different. Uh, so before you have kind of this much of uh, green boundary and the dislocations, uh, after cold work you have this kind of kind of a, the, the density of dislocation is getting higher, right? Uh, so this uh, kind of this uh, we have two diagrams. Uh, one is for the relationship between yield strains and the cold percentage of cold work. This one. The tensor strength and uh, the range between tensor strength and core. So you can see, no matter you have copper, you have brass, or steel, right? So when you increase the, the percentage of core, the uh, tensor strength and the yield strength will increase. Right? And another diagram is uh, uh, the ductility, the ductility between between ductility and the core. So when you increase percentage of core, so that means the ductility is uh, dropping. Uh, de decreasing. So that means, you know, uh, when you uh, increase cold work, that means we increase the number of dislocations, we increase the dislocation density, uh, then the yield strength and tensor strength will increase, but ductility is getting weaker, right? getting smaller. Uh, so this uh, example question, like uh, if we have a sample, we perform 0%, 4%, 24% cold work, so which one is which? Apparently, uh, if we have more cold work, it will get stronger, so this is 24, this is 4, this is 0. Uh, again, do you still remember in chapter 6, I asked you a question, like uh, uh, you have a piece of steel, you perform tensor test, you uh, uh, remove the load, then you uh, apply load again, then the yield strength will increase, right? Kind of, you know, when you have this plus deformation, you already generate a lot of dislocation inside here, right? And then, when you apply load again, so this is a, a uh, kind of because you have uh, generated a lot of dislocation in this stage, so then it will get harder. So that means the yield strength will increase. So that's the reason, because the number of dislocation, or density of dislocation increase, right? And also, there is a kind of, we just apply a cold work, but the mechanism is dissociations. Uh, this one, we already talked about it, right? Determine the uh, cold work. Uh, oh, that's a question. Okay, so original, if you have this material, like this material, but after rolling or rolling, you have uh, you have this structure. So here is because it's a polyprisming stru structure. That means the material will be isotropic. That means uh, no matter which direction you carry out tensile test, the mechanical performance will be same. But this one because of all grain following this direction, following rolling direction. So if you carry out the mechanical test along this direction and this direction, you may have different mechanical performance. So that, that means, you know, this material will be an isotropic, an isotropic material, okay? So here is a three uh, mechanism to uh, strengthening, to strengthen uh, metals, reduce green size, solid solution, and cold working, or you can call that string pump. Uh, but the, if we just uh, perform, or after we perform cold working or solid solution, but you know, uh, the material is too strong, but I want to, uh, want to have more ductile materials. Is there any way we can use to reduce the strength and the increase ductility? So yes, there are three strategies as well. So first one, we, we call that uh, recovery. Okay. 
The second one is uh, uh, is uh, uh, repressional acquisition. The third one is regrowth. So what does that mean? So we know after no matter uh, we re reduce uh, green size or uh, solid solution or uh, perform cold work, right? We increase the dissolution. Land strength will increase the ductility. So, but you know, the goal here, this part is improve the ductility. Right? So that means you know we need to reduce, we need to reduce this location. Increase ductility, that means we, we should reduce this location, right? So then we have three techniques we can follow to reduce the uh, to reduce the dislocation. The first one is recovery. What does it mean? Okay, so what is a recovery? You know if we have two dislocation, we assume in this structure we have two edge dislocation, right? We have one here, one here. Or we have extra, extra, uh, extra, extra half uh, uh, plane item of item here, extra half plane item here. If we increase the temperature, kind of uh, we give, we do not perform cold working. We just increase temperature a little bit. So that means you know we assume. We increase temperature, but we control the temperature less than 30% of melting temperature. Okay. Kind of, we have this structure, right? We have two edge locations. We increase temperature. But we control the temperature at less than 30% of melting temperature. Then what will happen? So, kind of you give some energy. So then, some other, because we have some item here. So, this item, when you give this energy, this item will would diffuse to this place. This item will diffuse this place. This item diffuse. Kind of these three atoms fix the gap here. Okay. So it will kind of these edge dislocations will connect together after you give these three atoms. So apparently, if you want to make it happen, you have to give some extra energy. That's why we give this temperature, you know, 30% of melting temperature. You, you don't need to give too much. You know then other item will diffuse to this space, then connect to this uh, uh, solution together. So that means, you know, in this process, the number of dislocations is decreasing. So when you decrease, uh, reduce the number of dislocations, then ductility will increase, strength will decrease. Oh, ductility will increase, uh, strength will decrease, right? Okay, so this is a recovery. Uh, uh, like you know, if you, I think this one is, uh, I thought was interesting. Anyway, so we have isotopium here. When you, uh, I think when they increase temperature, all they use electron beam to bombard the, the uh, this material, then isotopium uh, disappears. We call this dissolution and annihilation. Right? So that means. Uh, 
access location is gone. This is recovered. So another one is if you increase temperature to if you perform heat treatment in this range. Okay. So if you perform heat treatment between 30% melting temperature and 70% melting temperature, we call that process as recrystallization. So what does that mean? If you have materials after cold working, right, you have a lot of dislocations, but you go to mm, higher temperature. Right? So given certain time, like one hour, 10 minutes, you know, some other time, so you will see the crystal, you will see a lot of new crystals on the surface. So that means, uh, kind of at the beginning, you have a lot of green boundary, a lot of dislocations, right? But that's a small green, that means it's a bio line. So that means dislocations merge together. So that's why you have wild line items, right? So that's why you can see some crystals, you know, showing off, right? So that process uh, performed between 30% melting temperature and 70% melting temperature, we call that recrystallization. So kind of after four seconds, after eight seconds, you can see big chain, right? So you can see a lot of crystals coming off, a lot of crystals. So because you, you go to really high temperature, this process is really quick. Okay. okay. So, yeah. Uh, this uh, uh, re re uh, recrystallization temperature between 30% and 70%. Uh, definitely, you know, we have to generate a lot of dislocations. If there's no dislocations, you know, it's unnecessary to perform recrystallization because, you know, if there's no dislocation, then the whole dislocation merge each other, right? So that means you have to perform uh, uh, perform cold work, then you can recrystallize it. Re it right? The last one is a green growth. Green growth are kind of uh, between 70% melting temperature and melting temperature. Because you know you want to keep it as solid, so you want to go beyond melting temperature. So kind of you know uh, green growth are kind of uh, large phase, large, large phase uh, is uh, small phase, right? So uh, when you increase the high temperature, then the the small uh, the small grains, you know, the atom will merge the uh, large grains. So then finally you will have uh, large grains uh, left only. See this uh, uh, after refrigeration, right? You increase temperature, uh, or you keep it longer, so then uh, the small grains will merge into the large grains. Right? So that means you know, remember this is kind of reverse for the uh, reduced green side, right? So because of the, green, the number of green boundaries is getting uh, 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 less and the green size is getting bigger, so that means the ductility will increase, the uh, strength will, uh, will decrease, right? So this is after cold work, you have a lot of dislocations. Uh, uh, this is after the uh, new crystals are jumping out, we have more crystals. Then we have kind of almost all this are gone. We have a lot of greens. Then we have a lot of greens. We have really large greens. Right? Uh, see, we can go. We go to really high temperature. Right? Uh, so uh, again, you know, uh, this uh, we have we go we go to low temperature. We have recovery. We get to between thirty percent and seventy percent melting point. We have recrystallization. Then we have green rails. Right? Uh, between 70% uh, melting temperature and temperature. Uh, then the ductility will increase, 
about the tunnel strength will decrease right? because of uh, diesel engine more uh, either the number of, when the diesel engine the number of diesel engine getting less uh, then the uh, strength will getting uh, less uh, getting uh, get decreased right uh, but you know the ductility will increase. So uh, when we go to large grains, again, when we go to large grains, the number of green boundary will get uh, less, so that means the ductility will increase, the strength will uh, decrease, right? Uh, so this is the last slide for chapter 7. Uh, this uh, design problem is uh, 7D5. So this is a really good question. So. Um, uh, the goal is, you know, we have this uh, steel. Okay, so we have original diameter is uh, 11.4 millimeter, and uh, the goal is the goal is we want to get a uh, tensile uh, strength at 250 megapascal. Uh, ductility, ductility is uh, twelve percent, and the final diameter should be at point nine millimeter. Okay, so this is uh, the information from the problem. Okay, uh, apparently you can you can use this uh, two diagrams. Right? Uh, so you have this steel. Uh, we, the goal is we want to have final the final product. We want to have the tensile strength is 825 megapascal. Elongation should be over 12 percent. The final diameter okay, this is requirement. Final diameter is 8.9. Um, so then the question is, ask you to design a route or design a plan how to. No matter you perform cold working or heat filament, how to get to satisfy the third uh, criteria requirements. Uh, so you may think, okay, uh, for this uh, 10, uh, uh, 1020, uh, 1040, uh, before you perform any cold work, it's uh, around uh, 600, you know, less than 700, right? That means uh, we have to perform cold work. The question is, can you perform cold work directly? So then we, you can calculate if you just uh, play, uh, perform one step called working. Right? So this one will be forty percent cold work. Forty percent cold work. So if we have, we have forty percent cold work, okay, the strength will be around uh, almost a nine hundred. Right? About 825. Let's, let's satisfy this one, no problem. But when you come to this relationship between ductility and the core work, 40% the the the, uh, the ductility is less than 10. So that means you cannot satisfy this 10%. Now how to do it? That means one step is cannot uh, does not work. So then you need to kind of one step does not work. You have to perform two step work. So you can see you can identify what's the intermediate uh, diameter you can go. Right? Like uh, you want to, uh, if you want to get this uh, 8, 825, so the uh, cover should be 70 percent. If you uh, have 12 percent ductility, that means cold work should be 20 percent, right? So then you can select a number. Let's assume we can we want to get uh, you know 17 percent between 70 percent and the 20 percent of cold work will work, right? 
So you just name one, any number between them. Let's assume just a middle number. So you can you can calculate to get this code work from this intermediate diameter to final diameter. So based on this uh, code work, right? So you can get a number. So this one you can get it. Right. Then from kind of you know from here to here you just uh, perform 18 percent or 0.5 percent or 18.5 percent code work. You can get it, right? You will have this. Uh, you will satisfy this requirement. So then, from D0 to DI, you just perform a uh, code work, right? Then, code work. Then you have to perform heat treatment. Kind of recrystallization or regrowth, right? Um, then, after you, you have this one, kind of uh, the dissolution is gone, but you already reduced that. So then you perform the second code work you know, from DI to DF. So then you can, you can uh, reach the goal. So this is a really, really good design problem. I hope you guys can uh, uh, work on it uh, carefully. You know, if you still have a question, uh, let me know. But yeah, I, talk, I just give you some hint here. Hopefully you can uh, do it uh, independently. Okay. Uh, thank you guys.